Hello, my name is Álvaro Bernabéu and I'm going to present a brief introduction to Geographic Information Systems, also known as GIS, and more specifically to QGIS. QGIS is an open source GIS software whose interface and functionalities are very similar to other traditional GIS systems. From my own experience, for those of you who are just starting out in the world of GIS, its use is very simple and intuitive, and as it is open source, it can be downloaded for free on any operating systems, whether Windows, Macintosh or Linux. First of all, I'm going to show you how to download and install the program. This is the official QGIS webpage in English that can be found by typing QGIS in any search engine. To download the latest version, we click on the Download Now button. Currently, there are two versions available, 3.14p, which replaces 3.10 A Coruña. Here you can find both for Windows, Mac and Linux in both versions 32 bits and 64 bits depending on your computer. Once installed we will have a folder on our computer desktop called QGIS and the corresponding version with several apps but we will only use the QGIS desktop version. In this case we will work with the previous version 3.10 which is more stable than the most recent one and it has the same basic functionalities common to all versions of the software. When the program is started, a small waiting window will first appear and then the main interface. If you have worked with a project recently, it will appear in the central part, but as I imagine it is the first time you open it, it will be blank. To start a new project, go to the upper left corner in the paper icon, New, and load a new project. This is the main interface with all the toolbars and the panels on the sides. You may not see as many of them as I do at first, however, if we want to add or hide toolbars, we simply have to right click on any bar, and here we have all the options of bars and panels that we can show or hide. This option can also be done from the View tab at the top and in the Panels and Toolbars tabs. Next, I will show you how to access to some of the basic functionalities of the program, both from the top menus and from the corresponding toolbars. The first important point is related to the project's coordinate reference system. The cartographic projections try to represent the surface of the Earth or a part of it on a flat surface of paper or on the computer screen. A coordinate reference system, CRS, then defines with the help of the coordinates how the two-dimensional map projected in your GIS relates to real places on Earth. The decision about which map projection system and which coordinate reference system to use depends on the regional extent of the area you want to work with. You can assign or modify a reference system from the lower right corner of the interface and from the window that appears, look for the desired reference system. The map below helps you to check the reference system. Many times when you include a layer, the reference system is automatically assigned. It is important to know that in order to perform operations between layers, these layers must be in the same reference system as the project. Another important point is project management. For example, how to create a new project, how to save it, or how to open a previously saved project. To do this, we have on the one hand the project toolbar, which is here, and we have used to create a new project before, and also the project menu. In this case, we also have the export or import DEXF options, if we also work with other vector software such as CAD, and create or access the print layouts already created. A print layout, as we will see later, is a window that allows us to create maps and then export them in different formats, both PDF and image, as well as print them on external device. QGIS is a program that works from layers, whether they are vector, raster, WMS, delimited text, etc. And in this case, we have three different options to be able to add or create them. On the one hand, the Managed Layers toolbar. On the other hand, the first two tabs of the Layer menu, Create Layer or Add Layer, and in the case that they are vector or raster layers, we can also drag them directly from the folder of our computer 
to the program and they will be loaded automatically. All the layers that you add to your project will appear in the layer panel on the left, from which you can create groups to organize them, change their visibility by sewing or hiding layers, or even remove them. Vector layers can be modified within the program in two different ways, either from their geometry or from their style. From a geometry means to be able to move its parts, to create new parts, to eliminate them, to create holes, to close them. This can be done from the digitizing and advanced digitizing toolbars. You only have to click on the pencil button, toggle editing, and you will have all the options available to modify this geometry. When you are finished, you can click on the pencil button again to block the editing. This can also be done from the layer menu, toggle editing, and from the edit menu, and we will also have all these options available to modify the geometry. Modifying a vector layer from its style is related to how this layer is displayed on the workspace. For example, its color, its thickness, if it's aligned, its size, if it is a point, transparency, etc. We can do this from the Layer Properties window. To access this window, we can either double-click on the specific layer we want to modify or right-click on the layer and select Properties. In the window that appears, we can click on the Style tab on the left and from this interface we can modify all the parameters that we have mentioned, the color, the thickness of the line, the transparency of the layer or a predefined style. From this same layer properties windows, we can also activate labels. Labels are text elements that appear next to the vector elements of a layer and that name it with one of its attributes. To activate these labels, go to the Labels tab and choose to display single labels from this layer from the drop down menu. In the next drop down menu, we can choose the attribute we want to label the layer with. And if we apply it, we will see how one of the elements of the layer has been labeled with the corresponding attribute that we have selected. This option is also available in the Label toolbar. In QGIS, you can carry out operations or algorithms between vector or raster layers. The different options are available in the vector and raster menus. Within each of these menus, we find grouped by categories different operations that we can use to work with this type of layer. The algorithms that we have recently used will also appear in the processing toolbox where we can also use the search bar to look for other types of algorithms that are not available in the menus. Many times it's also interesting to add or load under the vector layers a map or cartographic base that can come from different managers such as Esri, Google, Carto, etc that allow us to have at least a special reference of where our vectoral elements are located on the map. To do this, we have the Web Menu option, from which you can access the different managers we have mentioned, OpenLayers plugin, Google Maps, Apple Maps. There are also plugins such as Quick Map Services that allow us access to more managers to load cartographic bases in our workspace. Plugins such as Quick Map Services are tools or options developed specifically for the software by independent users. All these plugins are stored in a repository from which we can filter and choose from a variety of tools to install or activate or update those that come by default in the program. To access the directory, we have to go to the Plugins menu and Manage and Install Plugins. Another important feature is selecting elements and scrolling through the map. To select elements, we have the Attributes toolbar. From here, we select elements manually or using formulas or algorithms and also deselect what is already selected. This bar also includes the option to measure elements, lines, areas or angles. To move around the map, we have the Map Navigation toolbar. From here, we can move around with the mouse, zoom in, zoom out, zoom only to those elements that are selected etc. All these options are also within the view menu. Here we have all the zoom and scrolling options as well as the measurement options. The selection tools are also in the edit menu. Finally, to export a map, we have pre-layouts. 
As we have mentioned, print layouts are windows that allow us to compose maps and then export them in different formats or print them. To create print layouts, you can click on the new print layout button on the project toolbar or from the project menu, new print layout. All the print layouts that you have created will appear in the layout drop down menu so that you can access them more easily. When a new print layout is created, this interface appears with the blank space that is the canvas where the maps appear and where the rest of the elements can be inserted. The size of this canvas can be modified right clicking on the canvas, page properties, and then from the item properties, tap on the sidebar. Here we can choose between different standard formats, portrait or landscape orientation, etc. Once the size of the canvas has been selected, we can start our layout adding maps, images, text, legend, scale, shapes, arrows, attribute tables, etc. all from the sidebar. To export the map, we will use the icons on the top, image format, vector format or PDF format. We can also print it on ex any external device, printer or plotter. And here ends this introduction. I hope that it has been useful for you to have a slight idea and a first contact with QGIS, the interface and the toolbars, panels and options. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.